guys, my name is Joanna, also known as Just Another Flutist, and I am a partner with the Flute Center of New York. We are bringing you guys monthly flute review videos, and this month we will be reviewing the Yamaha 577, 677, and 777. Now I know that sounds like that's a lot of models to be reviewing in one video, but you'll see soon why we are doing it this way. Before we jump into the review, I need to let you guys know about my code JAF. When you use this code with the Flute Center of New York, you will get yourself a couple of perks. You get free domestic shipping within the US, an extended 10 day trial, usually it's only seven days, an extended 18 month warranty on your new flute, and trials for up to three instruments at a time. Just to be transparent, I do earn a commission on each flute that is purchased through the Flute Center of New York using my code. If you want to take instruments out on trial, I will put a link to the Flute Center of New York's contact page down in the info box below. Just be sure that you are actually in the market to buy a flute before you take them out on trial. However, if you already know what flute you want to buy, you can go straight to their website to order that flute using my code. When you try the flutes, make sure you take off all rings and dangly jewelry that can potentially scratch the flute. Never use the polishing cloth, the swabbing cloth, and the cleaning rod that comes with each new flute because they are not yours yet. The Flute Center of New York will also price match any other authorized dealer. And lastly, a quick disclaimer, every flutist plays each flute differently. Like in Harry Potter, just as the wand chooses the wizard, so the flute chooses the flutist. I'm just here to describe to the best of my ability how each flute feels, and it's up to you to decide which flute fits you. All right, now when you get these flutes in your hands, you will notice that the cover is made from what looks like to be a very durable synthetic material. I normally don't see this kind of material used on covers, which I thought was pretty cool. There's really cute contrasting stitching and piping details on this case. That is really interesting to me because that is more work that has been put into these covers than on any other case that I've ever seen. The cover also has a really cute beige furry lining to it, also very, very unique. There's a very sturdy plastic cleaning rod. It doesn't even feel like plastic, even though I think it is, it's that sturdy. It comes with a matching shoulder strap, includes a polishing cloth and a swabbing cloth, as well as what appears to be a manual. This manual also even explains to you in multiple languages languages how to properly swab out your flute, which I think is a great addition to any flute purchase. Let me read out the specs on the Yamaha 577, 677, and 777 flutes. For the Yamaha 577, sterling silver hand cut type A head joint, silver plated body, foot joint and mechanism, French style open hole keys, pointed key arms offset G with split E mechanism, C sharp trill, drawn tone holes, stainless steel springs, point 43 millimeter tubing, Straubinger Phoenix pads, B foot joint. And now for the Yamaha 677, sterling silver hand cut head joint, sterling silver body with silver plated mechanism, pinned mechanism, drawn tone holes, French open hole model, pointed key arms, gold springs, 0 0.018 tubing, a equals 442, Straubinger Phoenix pads, offset G, split E mechanism, C sharp trill, B foot joint, handmade in Japan. The Yamaha 777 is sterling silver hand cut type A head joint, sterling silver body and mechanism, French open hole, offset G with split E mechanism, C sharp trill, pointed key arms, drawn tone holes, white gold springs, 0.43 millimeter tubing, Straubinger Phoenix pads, B foot joint. The Yamaha model number system actually tells you a lot about the flutes themselves. The first digit in the model number tells you the level of handmadeness and silver content in the flute. So you'll notice that the 577 has a sterling silver head joint and silver plated body end mechanism, whereas the 677 has a sterling silver head joint and sterling silver body but silver plated mechanism while on the Yamaha 777 the head joint is sterling silver and the body and mechanism are also sterling silver. The second number tells you whether it is an open or closed hole and whether it is an inline or offset G. The third number just tells you the iteration or the version number of these particular models. So these are the latest models are the ones that end with a seven. If you go online to search these specific models that I am playing for you guys, you'll notice that there are a couple of letters that come after the model number as well. When you see an H, it just means that it's a B foot joint. If you see a CT behind it, it means that it also includes a C-sharp trill key. So technically the exact model numbers that I am reviewing for you guys today is Yamaha 577HCT, 
Yamaha 677HCT and Yamaha 777HCT. So you're probably thinking that other numbers will probably mean other things too, but I didn't want this entire video to just be talking about Yamaha's model number system. So you guys can call out other model numbers that you want me to review and I will explain those in that review in the future. All right, so let's get right into the actual review. We're gonna start with the Yamaha 577 and just go up in order. I noticed that your air primarily spins on the roof of your mouth, but you don't feel like it's a ball of air that's spinning. You almost feel like it's a column of air just kind of going across the roof of your mouth. The lower you go, the more you want to feel like that start of that feeling of like rushing spinning air is starting further forward in your mouth. And I'm talking like around your teeth forward in your mouth. Because the column of air is spinning so quickly at the front of your mouth, it's really important to keep that area really open. If you've watched my other reviews, you've probably heard me say this over and over and over again. Wherever your air is spinning in your mouth, that part of your mouth has to remain extremely open. So in this case, I found that I had to hollow out the area behind my bottom front teeth. You can actually hollow it out in the same way that you can lift your soft palate. If you do this, you will find that your lower notes will ring. Now to get higher notes, you just want to start that rushing column of air further and further back in your mouth. So you just have to be pretty conscious of that while you're playing. If you play like this naturally, this will work so well for you. All right, and now for harmonics. <laughs> that I can actually reach the seventh harmonic on C, which means that I am fingering a low C, so like a C4, and I am able to get a C7 out. I've never been able to do that. <laughs> I can also reach the sixth harmonic on C sharp. Usually the easier it is to get out higher harmonics, the easier it is to just get out higher notes in general. So if you find yourself having to play lots of high notes all the time in band and stuff like that, then this flute will probably work really well for you. All right, and now for tone color. This part is really interesting. Of your mouth is what controls color. This includes your bottom lip. It's almost as if your entire jaw is just kind of one unit controlling tone color. Primarily it's the area behind your bottom front teeth. That area kind of just under your tongue. You are widening it to get a richer, more luxurious tone. And then if you narrow that part of your mouth, you will end up with that thin hollow sound that sometimes you want. So it's really interesting. You do a lot of like of course I have yet to try many other flutes, but this is the first that I have found that I can actually play with that part of my mouth. And now for the mechanism. <laughs> aren't extremely, extremely light. They're not feathery, but they're springy, which is quite nice. Just know that you can actually adjust keys to how whatever kind of lightness you actually like. But this is how they came to me. There's also a really nice separation and height difference between the B flat lever and the C sharp trill key. You will definitely not hit the wrong key when you are trilling away. The gizmo also appears to not only make it easier to get out these super high notes like C7,
but it also does flatten your tuning a little bit. So all around gizmo works very well on this flute. Now for articulation. <laughs> really interesting to me. I found that I was actually tonguing on the roof of my mouth about a third the way in. And it's actually the clearest, best way to tongue on this flute. Usually a lot of people think that that is the wrong way of tonguing, but it's what works on this flute. This of course means that for double tonguing, your K is quite far back in your mouth. It's sort of at the end of the roof of your mouth. It doesn't go all the way back into your throat. So be careful that you don't end up swallowing your Ks. But if you find that you double tongue further back in your mouth naturally, you will sound very clean on this flute. <laughs> Playing this flute, it reminded me of what it was like to play my own student model flute. So I wonder if that is actually a kind of a Yamaha thing. And lastly, dynamics. What's interesting is that essentially it is the top half of your mouth this time that is controlling the dynamics. Same idea, you can widen the column of air that is rushing over the roof of your mouth and you can narrow it. You will have to accompany this with a bit of lipping. You'll find yourself moving your lips to accommodate this motion. The wider your column of air, the more loud it's going to be. You'll also find that you have to kind of spin the air a little bit more. And the narrower you make this column of air, the softer you will play. Now for the Yamaha 677. a little bit, it does appear that the 677 plays very similarly to the 577, except that your column of air is not so high up in your mouth. It's about a third the way lower. So you don't feel it as much on the roof of your mouth. But in terms of where you start the column of air for lower notes and higher notes, it's pretty much the same. For the harmonics. <laughs> seventh harmonic on C. I don't understand how I'm doing this. <laughs> so again, the harmonics are extremely strong on the 677 as well. And now for tone color. works differently from the 577. About halfway into your mouth, if you lift your soft palate and you hollow out the area just under your tongue and you tuck your tongue back and you play with that chasm so you can open it up more for a more luxurious dark sound and if you make it smaller, you will end up with that hollow thin sound. <laughs> The 677 feels very similar, if not exactly the same as the 577. It's great. Now, articulation on this 677 is also a little bit different. <laughs> straight just up on the roof of your mouth about a third of the way in. In this case, you are tonguing where the teeth meets your gum, mostly on the roof of your mouth gum area, but you will feel that your tongue is just barely grazing the back of your front teeth. 
This is also particularly interesting to me because I have found that if I try tonguing this way on other flutes, you usually end up blocking your air stream somehow, and it usually kind of cuts your tone in half. But again, it works on this Yamaha 677. I'm not really sure what Yamaha did with their flutes that allows you to tongue in these ways that normally don't work on other flutes. I'm personally quite amazed by it. So if you find that you naturally tongue in these ways and it doesn't work on other flutes that you try, it will probably work on a Yamaha. Now because your tonguing is further forward in your mouth than on the 577, your K's for double tonguing are not as far back as the 577. The K's are about two thirds the way into your mouth on the roof of your mouth. And now for dynamics. <laughs> The dynamics on a 677 are actually controlled by the very, very front of your mouth. So you almost want to feel like you are holding some sort of ball in the front of your mouth. About a quarter of it is in front of your teeth and three fourths of that ball is behind your teeth. And that entire area has to be super big and round for your fortes. And to get pianos, all you do is you take that ball and you make it smaller. While you do this, especially for the fortes, you will feel the air spinning behind your front teeth a lot. That's how you know you're doing fortes correctly on this flute. Now, because working with dynamics is so far forward in your mouth, you really need to make sure that you do not smash the flute against your chin because you will essentially be cutting into that ball that you need to create dynamic contrast. And now for the last flute in this review, the Yamaha 777. In terms of where the air is spinning, it's very, very similar to the 677. However, all of your playing is just even more forward. So as a result, in order to get your low notes to really ring, you will feel like that column of air starts to spin, not behind your lips, but right at your lips. I'm not joking here. <laughs> this also means that as you go higher in range, you won't find yourself moving the starting points of that column of air as far back as you did on the 677. So you probably only go about maybe three fourths the way into your mouth for the harmonics. <laughs> I can also hit the seventh harmonic. I don't understand why. Yamaha, how are you doing this? I, I, I'm not understanding how you are making it so that I can hit the seventh harmonic on low C. Good job. As you can tell, one of the biggest strengths for these Yamaha flutes is the fact that they can play really well, really high. You don't have to put in as much effort to play those high notes. And that's really great because it allows you to play more lyrically and more expressively even when you are screaming out the third register notes. In terms of playing with tone color, it works exactly the same as the 677, maybe just placed a little bit further forward, but only a tiny bit. also feels very similarly to the 677. Probably just a little bit lighter, but that may just be because it was adjusted slightly differently than the 677. 
Now the articulation is a little bit different on the 777. Your tongue is placed a little bit lower than the 677. So you are primarily tonguing against your front teeth while barely grazing the gum right above it. So really this just means that articulation is also just a tad bit more forward in your mouth than on the 677, which also means that your K's for double tonguing don't go as far back either. So whereas on the 677, it was about two thirds the way into your mouth, your K's on the 777 only go about halfway into the roof of your mouth. And now for dynamics. Again, similar to the 677, but more forward. What's really interesting is that you can really feel the air spinning, not right behind your front teeth, but between them. It's a very interesting sensation. I have never felt that on a flute before. <laughs> Generally, it's the same idea with that ball of air that you are making larger for fortes and smaller for pianos. It's just that that ball is placed even more forward. So that of course means that on the 777, you really cannot afford to smash your flute against your chin. You will probably dent about a quarter of that ball of air that you need to create these dynamic contrasts. All right, and that is it for this review. Let me grab the invoice so we can talk about prices. For the Yamaha 577, the base price is $2,785.99. The specific model that I have adds the C-sharp trill key, which is only an additional 150. I know that for some of you that you're like, wait, seriously, just adding one key is 150. But trust me, that is pretty much as cheap as you can get to add a C-sharp trill key. It's great bang for your buck. And side note, the split E mechanism actually comes standard on the offset G model. The Yamaha 677's base price is $3,761.99. Adding the C-sharp trill key also adds 150 bucks. The split E mechanism is also standard on offset G models. The Yamaha 777 base price is $6,562.99. Adding the C-sharp trill key is also $150. Split E mechanism, also standard on offset G models. And that is it for this review. These flutes were absolutely a joy to play with. I actually found that it didn't take me as long to figure out these flutes because like I said, I actually started on a Yamaha flute when I was a wee child. Let us know in the comments below what other flutes you want us to review. Follow the Flute Center of New York on their social media. I will put all the links in the bottom bar below. If you like this video, make sure you give me a big thumbs up and hit subscribe for new videos every Saturday. My last video is over there and if you want to catch me during the week my social media networks are down there but otherwise i will see you guys next week bye all right guys this is kind of sad but this is the last time that i am filming in this particular room i'm actually in the process of moving right now this is the last part of moving that has not been taken down yet so Kind of sad, but actually, I don't know how much of a difference it is going to be for you guys because when I set this all up in a new place, I don't really know if you can tell that I've really moved.